Hey everyone, this is Matt, and in today's video I have for you an Adventures of video, this time the Adventures of Labyrinth in the uh, post-transaction rollback world, right? So, uh, yeah, it's been a some, little bit of time since I dropped my last video. My last video was uh, the Yu-Gi-Oh! Omega Adventures of, right? The two-parter. Um, that was like over five hours of content and like over a hundred games and duels that I that I've had to to record to play and record, right? I spent so much time on that last thing that I, I just needed like a little break from Yu-Gi-Oh! Just to just to unwind and like cool off, right? Because that was that was a lot, right? So for some of you are wondering, oh, you know, what about the transactions rollback stuff? What about the Duelist Cup stuff? I, I'm aware there's a lot of content that I'm so I'm gonna do for March and I'm gonna catch up on that. Uh, but I just needed like a little break from the like the TCG stuff. Like, yeah, that last video was was a lot. It was exhausting. Anyway, uh, no deck list in this video. So if you're looking for a deck list, uh, you know you ain't gonna find it. There's there's not gonna be a deck list for a while. Um, you know, cause yeah, you know, I have to make a separate. If I make a deck list video at all, cause you know I never do. Like, uh, it would be the last video after all the adventures of have come out. Um. You know, because that's just how I roll. Anyway, so what do we have today? So this is Adventures of um, me uh, playing in ranked, uh, climbing from Diamond 5 uh, to Master 5, right? So climbing through Diamond, uh, based on the dates and how, you know, that, that stuff's working out. I believe the order that I'm going to be doing is Adventures of uh, my climb from Diamond to Master, followed by... Adventures of um, me in the Duelist Cup. Uh, followed by Adventures of me climbing from Master 5 to Master 1. Followed by, if, if a decklist will ever come out, uh, a decklist video. So that's roughly a, 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 a what you would expect the timeline of events to be. Um, so yeah, got, got a lot of duels here for you. Um, yeah, uh, there have been some major changes to the decklist. Um, my last time I did a Master Duel ranked climb, I posted the, the decklist at the start of the video because, um, well, the changes were so minor. But now that we have Transduction Rollback, there are, there are no longer minor changes. They are, like, significant changes. Um, so, yeah, without further ado, let's get into some of these duels, shall we? All right, so first, uh, duel number one, we have... Uh, Labyrinth versus what is this? Dinomorphia. Oh yeah, I believe this is the very first duel uh, since Transaction Rollback came out. Yeah, so Transaction Rollback was released. Uh, yeah, pretty sure this is the first duel. So this player is running the one copy of Wannabe, uh, three Ash Blossom, the one copy of Lilith. That's kind of odd. Only two Fair Flames, even though it's not once per turn. Uh, two grave diggers. That's so cringe. Why would you play two grave diggers? Also, where's your product pros prosperity, my guy? Like, like I know, like Dynamorph uses their extra ed deck more, but it's like with product prosperity, you can literally pick what you banish. So, I don't know. This just seems silly to have. You know, you're not gonna have product prosperity, but you're gonna have grave diggers trap hole, like one of the dumbest, worst trap cards in the game. Really? Okay. I mean. If you say so, like, at least cut Ash Blossom to two if, and put the pot in, please. Like, this is just silly. Um, all right, anyway. Uh, yeah, one thing that kind of sucks about Dynamorphia is the fact that, and why I don't like playing it, is because it, it loses a little too hard to Ash, right? Ash is a card that everyone is going to run because no one is creative in Yu-Gi-Oh! Everyone just runs the most generic, most easy to activate card in existence, which is Ash, Bl Ash Blossom, right? Which, it does hit almost every deck. It does, uh, you know, can shut down rogue decks, right? Ash Blossom is like the rogue deck killer, right? Like, it's like rogue decks that have that one line of play, they just get shut down by Ash, they're done playing the game, right? Uh, actual non-rogue decks, uh, they can usually ignore Ash, right? But I guess the idea is like, oh, if you have Ash in like another hand trap, like, maybe you can stop your opponent. Maybe you can stop your opponent, right? I like playing cards that might... I like playing decks that my opponent's techs do nothing against me. Oh, you have Ash, Droll, uh, Valor, uh, all this other shit. Nibiru? Cool. N my deck completely doesn't care about any of that. Like, Labyrinth doesn't give a shit about Ash. If your Labyrinth deck is losing... If you're losing to Ash Blossom and you're playing Labyrinth, you're building the deck wrong. 
I'm just going to put that out there. Getting well, getting Ash on a on a Ariana or a welcome uh, should not end your turn. Should not do really impede you. It's just it's just it just slightly delays the inevitable of you winning the game, or that's how it should be, right? Uh, it doesn't actually. There's no scenario I've ever played where an Ash Blossom defeated my like my labyrinth deck and like was the you know got my opponent to win the game. So that's just the way it is, right? So then Dynamorphia, it's like well. Ash, you like they can ash all the Dynamorphia fusion spells, right? And or fusion traps. And if your fusion traps don't go off, you're a lot weaker. You're so weak without your fusion monsters in Dynamorphia. Like all you got is back row to rely on, and a lot of these back row depend on you having Dynamorphia monsters on the field, and it really helped to have the fusions. So it feels really bad to get ashed at, if you're a Dynamorphia player, and just because of that, it's just like I don't want to play Dynamorphia just because. Like I said, Ash is everywhere, everyone plays it, and it's actually going to do something against a Dynamorphia deck, right? Unlike Labyrinth. Like, Ash does literally nothing to, to Labyrinth. So, contrary to popular belief. Anyway, um, enough about that, right? Let's get started with the duel. Yeah, just to put things in perspective, like, everyone's, a lot of people are running Ghost Spell now in, t in the TCG. I literally play through Ash Ghost Bell and still win the games. So it's like, yeah, obviously those those cards don't do anything. Anyway, so what do I do here? So I'm I'm gonna activate Stovey for uh so I go first. I shotgun Stovey, uh send welcome. I send welcome because I have a second copy of welcome in my hand. Plus, uh welcome can come back from the graveyard. So perfectly fine to pitch. Yeah, I am running furniture now. Surprise. I've been teasing this for, for months now that as soon as we got transaction rollback, we were gonna play furniture. Now, for those of you wanted, oh, but Ma in Master Duel, unlike in the TCG, the furnitures are at two. What what do we do? Uh, the same thing we do in the TCG. We play one furniture of each. One stove, one Ku Clock, one Shindagri layer. That's it. That's all you need. If you play more than one, you're a fuck you're a fucking idiot. You don't need more than one. Oh, but you know, how am I gonna get transaction rule back out of my hand? Uh, Ariana searches the furniture. Welcome search the furnitures. Lord uh, searches those things. Like welcomes, right? It's like you're gonna get roll back transaction roll back out of your hand. Don't worry, it's gonna happen. So people who are like panicking, oh shit, you know, master duel. The furnitures are at two. It doesn't matter. It's it's even better that two. They can limit the furnitures to one, and it will not change our build. Like that, you don't need more than one. You just don't. Trust me on this. I've played tests with two for, of each furniture. I was. For a long time, I thought, oh, maybe two is the right ratio. Two stove, two uh, should regulator. Because these furniture, are, they're very bricky, right? You don't want to see more than one in your opening hand, right? Sometimes you like so you might not want to see one ever, right? But if you do, you know, or just if you have it in your deck, you can, again, search it off Ariana, search it off welcome, right? It's perfectly fine to do big welcome into a furniture or welcome into a furniture. It's not, it's not a big deal, right? Anyway. So what do I do here? So I sent Ku Clock first because uh, for those of you who don't know, so this card says uh, if you have a fiend on the field, uh, you can send it to the graveyard. You can activate a, tra a, a set card, a trap card that was set this turn. If you control, sorry, if you control Labyrinth Monster, not a fiend. Um, and then if this card is already in the graveyard, and then another card is sent, is discarded to activate as cost for another ca uh, card effect. So basically, what the for the, for the stove does, right? Uh, I can special summon or return this to the hand. So basically, I send Ku Clock. And by the way, I've seen Labyrinth players not do this correctly. You always send the clock before you send this furniture. Always. There's no... Ex like, there yeah. I've seen people do the opposite, or I've seen people forget that Ku Clock has a graveyard effect, right? So anyway, uh, Stove Pitches, Welcome. So the And then I set Big Welcome. So but this Big Welcome can be activated this turn if I have a Labyrinth Monster. But how do I get a Labyrinth Monster on my field? Well, on New Chain, uh, Ku Clock Special Summons. He's in a maxi, but it doesn't matter. Maxi is worthless. So here comes the clock. Special summons. And now Big Welcome can be activated because I control Labyrinth Monster, right? Uh, so normally I'll bring out Lovely, bounce clock to hand. Lovely pops a card in their hand. So I get to pop a card before they get to do anything, which I've said before is like to is like toxic game design. But, you know, it is what it is. We're, we're making use of it. Um, they're going to Ash. Uh, doesn't matter. Because, uh, well, you'll, you'll see why. So I'm going to set regular welcome and uh, punishment, right? So uh, I have two interruptions. This welcome can bring out a lovely. 
Um, actually, I have three interruptions, right? This welcome brings out a lovely. Uh, punishment can take out two of their cards. Lovely can take out a third card, and then big welcome in the graveyard to take out uh, bounce on another card. So you see what I mean by getting Ash doesn't matter. I got Ash, and I still have three three things I can do on my opponent's turn. So. All right, duality into fossil dig. Okay, yeah. So I saw as soon as I saw that duality, I'm like, yeah, this is a Dinomorphia deck. Okay, so there's Theresia into domain battle phase uh, on battle phase. Here comes Lovely uh, punishment onto Theresia. Send Entis uh, chain link Entis to pop their uh, their domain. Chain link two Lovely to po to pop any card I want. Hand or field non targeted. Chain link three Welcome to return from the graveyard. Uh, chain link four. Fuck with my chain link four. Oh no, chain link three was was stove Torby to return to the field. Chain link four is welcome. Yeah, so they're gonna chain link five. Call by the grave uh, on the Entis because they don't want me to pop their fusion spell. But hey, uh, guess what? I still get to pop one of your cards off, lovely. So this is pointless. Okay, cool. So they prevented one pop, but I'm still taking out their fusion spell. Okay. All right, Entis is negated. Like whatever, and then they're just gonna scoop. Yeah, because. I'm guessing they don't have another copy of the fusion spell or the fusion trap, rather. Um, and guess what? If they if they end on a right on a card, uh, that's a, that is their fusion spell on end phase. I can just use big welcome to bounce it to their hand, and then the it's dead. It's, it's a dead card, right? So yeah, it, yeah, it's just toast. Like they, they got nothing they can do, right? Anyway, uh, duel number two, we have labyrinth versus um, what is this? Cash Tira. Yeah, just straight, just simple, good old Cash Tira. Any spicy texts? Not particularly. One copy of Lava Golem is kind of funny. Not sure what that's about. Is Lava Golem searchable? Hmm, I don't know. That's a good question. Oh, they have ry Rycophobia. Wait, what the fuck? The, wait, the arrival Cybers at Ignister? Wait, is this, is this something they can actually summon? I guess they have a Water, Earth, Wind... Fire, dark. Uh, <laughs> that's funny. I, 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 this card never came up, but looking at their deck now, that's that's kind of hilarious. If they can actually make it, I don't know. I, I don't know the, the like the full summoning conditions of the arrival cybers. I just assume it's like a late six, right? Anyway. Oh no, I open rollback without furniture. Whatever do I do? Uh, I'm an extra for for two. Uh, they're going to D-shifter, sure. And then I have Ariana. Oh look, Ariana can search. Well, I, 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 uh, well, I would normally search furniture, but because I'm under D-shifter, there's no point, right? Uh, I'm just going to get the field spell because the field spell gives me more plays. So I lord, uh, and then big, I have a big welcome in this, right? Um, and here's the thing, folks. Big welcome if I want, can bring out a furniture. Uh, but again, under D-Shifter, it's probably not a good idea, right? So, yeah, it. in this case, it, it's not going to matter. So, yeah, you say, oh, two, two bricks in my hand. I mean, yeah, evenly matches is, is a strictly going second card, but it's really good uh, in this format against Snake Eyes. Uh, it's better than Sphere Mode because uh, Sphere Mode triggers all their graveyard effects, right? Um, evenly is just amazing. Uh, be like, banishing Snake Eyes cards face down is like so amazing and a lot of times they don't have an omni gate most of the time they do not have an omni gate um if they have like a standard uh snake board a uh, snake eyes board and then evenly also works with transaction rollback yeah yeah so if both of these are in my graveyard i can literally roll back to copy evenly which is insane anyway they're gonna prosp uh okay fog king okay that's interesting so there goes the unicorn yep unicorn and cash tier theosis so he's gonna target you, uh, Unicorn will cash your Theosis, which will special a card from deck. I'm going to chain Big Welcome uh, to basically pop this Unicorn so the cash your Theosis fizzles. I'm going to bounce Ariana. Pop. Uh, okay, they're going to... Uh, I'm going to pop another card, and I'm going to uh, summon Lord immediately. Well, it's going to bring out regular Welcome. So, what did I pop? I pop their Rise Heart. That's cool. Uh, unicorn comes back, but I mean, unicorn's just a body. Okay, there's ogre. Ogre is gonna get preparations. Okay, and then uh, they're going to use this so normal summon this guy. So I'm just gonna uh, karma cannon because um, uh, he can't use his effect. And then 
He already used his normal summon. Uh, yeah, every, I'm pretty sure everything else would be dead, right? And then uh, off of Karma Cannon, I can actually use the field to bring out Ariana and then search uh, Lady, right? And then on end phase, I'm going to special Lady. Yeah, this is all in the D-Shifter, by the way. Yeah, D-Shifter, yeah, they're going to scoop. But, uh, yeah, uh, basically, um, you kind of know what's going to happen. No more D-Shifter. Um, I can literally uh, welcome into, into an Ariana, search the furniture, pitch a rollback, uh, pop a monster, lo uh, lovely pops, or, you know, lady grabs another thing from deck, lovely pops, uh, cashier preparations. Um, yeah, and then I have uh, two level fours, right? I could swing for a lot of damage. Or uh, maybe I can just bring out... Uh, it depends if I had a game or not. But the point is, the board state is, is over for them, right? Um, I get, I'm going to get roll back in the graveyard. I have, I, I just drew punishment, which is amazing because you know, most of their stuff are psychics, right? Uh, it's just good removal. Um, yeah, it's, it's a, they're just going to scoop because, um, they got nothing. Like, and if they attempt and, you know, and and obviously lovely can reset, um, big welcome if, if needed. Uh, and then, you know, if they try to do the unicorn play again, I just stop them. Right. Like I did the previous turn. Uh, actually, uh, Lovely would reset the room of Karma Cannon because Karma Cannon is like an amazing card. Uh, duel number three, we have what's this guy's name? Uh, okay, uh, Labyrinth versus Time Lords, I guess. Oh, Time Lords stun. <laughs> okay, sure, I mean, whatever. This is a five duel turn, a five turn duel. I'm trying to remember what happened in this one. Well, I think they just sit on Jalgen, but I I think I just out them. Like yeah. Like this, like this Jalgen Time Lord stun is just strictly worse than Labyrinth, honestly. Uh, wait, what's that in your hand? Simul Archfiends. What the f is that? Yes, Simul Archfiends is the new the, the new D barrier, folks. Uh, yeah, we're playing this out of one of because it's searchable off Lady and and Lord, right? Uh, yeah, reward this card. This turn, neither player can special monster with the same card types, Ritual Fusion, Synchro, Exceeds, or Link that they already control. If you don't not control two of the same, whatever, you gain a 500 attack. Yeah. So this is really good against Snake Eyes. Uh, first of all, D Barrier does nothing against Snake Eyes, right? But the main thing is D Barrier. Uh, this card here against Snake Eyes, they make a Link Karibo. You flip this card, they're done Link summoning. That's it. Like they, their only option is to use Link Karibo to crash into your, in your battle phase, which case they lose their battle phase. And again, and then, but then they won't be able to Link climb, right? So, and then they can only make. Link monsters with materials on the field, they cannot make a link monster using the existing link monster. So, so it basically, trust me, this card is better than the summon limit against um, Snake Eyes. I've been playtesting it uh, into the TCG. It's 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 super cracked. What about other matchups? What about Branded? This is also good against Branded. Let's say they play Branded Fusion. They make a uh, a Lubelion. They discard a card for Lubelion's effect. You chain this card. They can't fusion summon. <laughs> they just discarded a card for no reason, and they ended on Lubelion. Cool, right? <laughs> uh, like Brandon re relies on on having multiple fusions and being able to fuse multiple times on the same turn. Like if Brandon can only fuse once, they their their board is just sad, right? Like this basically says you can only fuse once, right? You can only link once against Sword Soul. They make a Chi Shao. You this you make this. They can't make a bro. They can't make a anything else, right? They can't make a Changing, right? So yeah. Obviously, D Barry is better against Branded, Sword Soul, etc. But this card is not bad. It's it's very solid against all those decks. But the main takeaway is that it completely shuts down Snake Eyes. Right? They 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 kind of have to make some weird ass plays. Um, well, yeah, but basically, like I, it, it kills IP. Right? It's also good against Mathmech, uh, folks, because they can't. They again, they cannot link climb. Right? The whole point of link monsters. One of the reasons they're they're good is because there's a lot of recursion in the ability to link climb. If they can't link climb, this pretty much kills a link monster type. Right? Anyway, yeah. So we are playing one of these. Open a, a rollback. Oh no, it's a it's a brick, isn't it? Well, let's find out. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and draw two. Oh look, a, a stove Torby. Let's pitch that. Set a regular welcome. Why regular welcome? Because um, I have a punishment and some other cards, and I feel like regular welcome would be better here. Yeah, set five pass. Let's go. So there's barrier statue of light. Oh no, I uh of the heavens. 
I can only make light monsters. And then he's going to call by on my stove. Uh, okay, sure. That doesn't do anything. But sh that, that's cool. End phase. Punishment. Bam. And says pop this. Bam. Mirror force. Oh, mirror force, bro? Really? Yeah, so I'll bring out the lovely here so that I can recycle some cards, right? Battle. Bam. Reset welcome. Yeah, I'm going to reset welcome. Uh, why not reset punishment? Uh, because punishment can recycle welcome. Um, in case they don't have a punishment target. Because once I saw this was a stun deck, I'm like, they, a lot of times they just don't have monsters, right? Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and get uh, this dude. And then they're going to write Geki my board. Wow. Okay, that's that's kind of hilarious. Uh, battle phase. So this is their normal summon. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and Karma Cannon. Because that's hilarious. And I'm going to go ahead and set big welcome. Okay. Cool story, bro. Wow. Very, very, very interesting deck you got there. Not the easiest. <laughs> anyway, flip summon, big welcome. Chain lady, let's go ahead and set ice dragons. Uh, because if I pop one of their time, I believe all the time lords are the same type, if I'm not mistaken. They're just different attributes. I think they're all fairies. So Lovely's going to... Uh, so Big Welcome's going to bounce Lady. Lovely's going to pop this. And now they have a Time Lord in the graveyard. And now I can literally Ice Dragons any Time Lords that show up on their field. And it's over, right? Yeah, we are playing the one Ice Dragons. This is really good against Snake Eyes. Um, yeah, so Lovely 1, Welcome 2. Pop that. Battle. Bam. Roll back. Uh, the reason I'm doing rollbacks is because I have game here. They are 2200 uh, life, right? Bam. Yeah. Yeah, rollback copy to big, big welcome. Good stuff. Easy game, easy life. Uh, duel number four, we have Labyrinth versus Snake Eyes. Uh, they have one copy of Where Arf Thou. Okay. Um, two Evenlies, that's pretty pog. I mean, Evenlies are, are hilarious in the mirror matchup, I'm sure, right? Yeah, this card, original Sinful Spoil, needs to be banned. It's too fucking stupid. Too much recursion, too much advantage. It's just, it's, it's too, it's too, it's too much. Yeah, t killing that will kill the Fire Engine, uh, Fire Fire King, uh, Snake Eyes, and it'll also kill Jet Synchron, right? Because how else do you search Jet Synchron without original Sinful Spoils, right? I go first or second here. Uh, I guess I go first. So Foolish Barrel Goods into Rollback. So now I have two punishments, right? Uh, set one, pass. So this might look like a weak board. Uh, oh, shit. You know, I have one set card, but uh, trust me, it's enough. <laughs> Snake Eyes is not that <laughs> good of a deck. Fire King Snake Eyes, though. All right, so anyway, Ash into Poplar. This is from a one-for-one, one, so didn't even normal summon. The fact that decks can just pop off like this without normal summoning is insane to me. It's like... Should not be allowed. Anyway. Okay. There's a Jet Synchron. There's the Oak. By the way, if I recall correctly, this dude is a bot. I'm pretty sure this dude is a bot. Because the the, the decisions they make are so fucking bad. It's like this this dude is a bot or a child. Like I don't like I I don't know how else to explain it. You'll you'll see very soon, right? I'm pretty sure this is the, the one. Alright, so so uh the re so the reason I'm interrupting now is because um they have enough to make Barone, and I don't like that. So I'm going to go ahead and Punishment onto the Flamberge. Uh, why not the level 1s? Because they have Link Rebo, they can chain, right? So I'm going to go ahead and send Bucephalus. Uh, they're going to get two level 2s. I'm going to get use Bucephalus to send Garura, but they're, they're going to call by the Grave on Bucephalus. Wow. Why not call by the Grave on Garura? Like, that's just silly, right? So there's a big welcome. Okay. <laughs> They're going to triple tactics to take my lord. Formula Synchron. Wait, maybe this is not the bot game I'm thinking about. Yeah, so then they're going to make Dark the Dark Charmer. And now they're going to target lord. So at this point, I have to roll back, right? Because this is too much advantage, right? Um, getting, uh, if I let this go through, they'll have three bodies, right? So I'm going to take out two bodies using rollback. So target, uh, Dark, send Entis. 
and it says target formula synchron because uh, I don't want them to synchro anything. And then they're, they're, they're going to battle. Cool. If, be hilarious if this is impairments. Like, bro, uh, I have no monsters, so <laughs> worthless card. All right, we get the field spell, we get a trap trick. So we're popping off, folks. Ooh, there's an ash. Oh, no. Lucky for us, we have trap trick. And trap trick is like just everything you can want in a card. And plus, uh, they have three cards here. This card here is probably Imperm, um, which is worthless, right? Uh, so Oak is really their only card. So they're going to banish this. Again, the fact that... <sighs> Such a stupid card. Anyway, like The fact that this is a double searcher, right? It's just asinine to me, and a full combo started from the graveyard, right? This is a zero-card combo. If this card is in your graveyard, you're effectively... Let's say you have zero cards. This is a full combo. Unbelievable. Anyway, here comes the the Ash, the Poplar. Okay. Uh, all right. There's a Divine Temple. Okay, maybe I'm thinking of another Snake Eyes player that was a bot. I don't think it's this one. Now that I remember. Okay. There's a Flamberge. Okay. Five monsters. Yep. Set four minutes Synchron. Make IP Masquerina. Okay. Make Access Code Talker. All right. Now that Access Code is on the field, this is where we got to start doing stuff. So first, uh, they're going to uh, gain a bunch of attack. Uh, I'm going to Trap Trick into Welcome, right? Uh, because Access Code Talker is not undestructible, right? Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and welcome here uh, into Lovely. Lovely's going to pop Flamberge. Now, why do I not pop Access Code? Actually, no, sorry. Access Code is indestructible because it was made with IP Masquerina, but I have a big welcome so I can balance Access Code. Yeah, so I'm popping Flamberge, and they're going to Chainlink 1 uh, this to summon uh, Chainlink 2 Lovely to pop the Field Spell, and they're going to Imperm, uh, which is fine. Uh, because I'm still going to pop a uh, bounce access code here. And now they're going to bring out a poplar. Okay. Uh, because both their flambers are in the graveyard. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> what a fucking end board. All right. I got a lord. So what? Well, uh, Lovely's going to bring back trap trick, which is basically any card, trap card I want, right? It was great. Goodbye, poplar. They're going to do this, like, whatever, I don't care. Uh, Lord, yeah, this game is 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 Jover. <laughs> By the way, folks, I literally, like, played through this entire Snake Eyes board with Punishment and Rollback, right? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> is that Bell Star? Uh, okay. Where is, oh, original Simple Spoil is still here. Oh, because they don't have a Wanted to Recycle. Yeah, so Wanted Recycle is original, right? So here comes a... So I'm going to Trap Trick here into Big Welcome. So this is a misplay that I made. A slight misplay. Um, well, it's not a misplay, actually. Uh, so I wanted to send, summon Lord here because I want to uh, summon... I want Lord to set a card, and then I want to bounce Lord to my hand and then summon a Lady, I believe, right? Basically, they're, they're, they're going to make Savage Dragon, right? So I'm just going to destroy that, stop that. So I'm going to set the pot here. Uh, they're going to summon Flamberge. I'm going to big welcome. Here comes a lady. A bounce lord pop the field spell so they don't get their Flamberge. No more field spell. And then lovely effect. Uh, chain welcome. Set. And then pop uh, Jet Synchron. So they're just going to... I guess they gave up and they're going to crash. I don't know. Yeah, sorry. There is a bot snake. All right, they're going to wanted. Okay, sure. I don't know what the point of that is. I'm just going to summon Lord and swing for game. <laughs> like, why not? Yeah, you can summon Lord from flipping pot, by the way, in case you all forgot. Like, any any set card, spell or trap, on anyone's turn, you can summon Lord. Yeah, I mean, I, I like, at this point, even though my hands start out weak, like, I was just able to survive the one turn I needed with just the one you know, punishment, right? Punishment rollback. This is why I love rollback. I got the punishment twice on their turn. So happy. And then I, I just draw out like all my good cards. Like all mine. Well, I guess all my cards are good. I draw out like more cards, right? 
So yeah, Snake Eyes is a joke. Uh, duel number five, uh, Labyrinth versus um, Dogmatica. Oh, this is a this is a, a quick and funny game. Normally, I wouldn't record a game like this, but uh, I just thought it was hilarious. Yeah, the way that it, it, it ended so anticlimactically. <laughs> By the way, just for probability sake, uh, with one copy of Shinrag Lear, one copy of Stove Torby, there's a one in four chance I open one of them in my opening hand. So, the fact, and I'm rolling two rollback. By the way, I'm running two rollback in case everyone's wondering, not three, just because uh, I play I play test enough to like feel that three. Like sometimes you get that double rollback in hand, and it feels awful. You never want to see double rollback in hand. It's, it just feels awful. But very rarely do I even even use three rollbacks, right? Yeah, so they're gonna yeah, so they're down the deck. They're gonna pitch diviner, okay. Uh, Herald, uh, grab the spell. Diviner is a, is a, is a fair. I'm pretty sure Dogmatica rituals are all spellcasters. So as soon as he plays, so oh, even better, he makes a cyburst. Cool. As soon as he plays this, which allows him to ritual summon. Uh, unless he's ritual summoning a cyburst, rivalry, baby. <laughs> GG. <laughs> yeah, can't make can't ritual summon a cyburst. <laughs> Game's ogre. Yeah, I just thought that was funny. Uh, number six, Labyrinth versus um, Snake Eyes. <sighs> One copy of Nibiru. Two original Sinful Spoils. Man, this guy is running two of them. Please ban this card, Konami. It's so stupid. It's it's a zero card combo. It's actually like absurd. All right, they're going to want it. Cool. Oh, I'm going second. Yeah. The bell star. Oh, maybe this is the dude that's a that's a bot, I think. I'm pretty sure, yeah, cuz I I I think I go second, yeah, against this completely brain dead snake eyes player, which to be fair, if you're if you're a snake eyes player, you're you're kind of outing yourself as brain dead like you that's kind of, being brain dead is kind of a requirement for being a snake eyes player, right? Uh for the most, it's it's like a big, you know. Yeah, this is kind of brain dead. So why is he brain dead? Uh, well, you'll see in a bit. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna make IP Mascarena. So no Baron. Okay, that's cool, I guess. It makes Sprite Elf. That's okay. Sprite Elf is, is Sprite Elf is legal in Mashable apparently. Yeah, so they can do that. And uh, this is a level two, and that's a link two. So. Uh, but they can only bring them back if I have a monster, right? Which I, I do with Ar in the case of Ariana. Actually, sorry. They c they can bring back Synchron anytime. Uh, they can only bring back Lynx. Yeah. Ohita, uh, Promethean Princess. There's the IP. All right. So, in theory, uh, they have a good board in the sense of uh, Sprite Elf can revive Formula Synchron. Formula Synchron can Synchron on my turn. Uh, make a Synchro Tamic Baron. IP can come out via Slamberge. IP with another, with like, let's say Sprite Elf or whatever can make a, I mean, not Little Knight because that card's not legal yet but, or here yet, but like a Unicorn, for example. So not, not a bad end board, right? And my opening was not great. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and field spell. They're going to, for some reason, they're going to, summon flamberge and not the ip so that was a big eyebrow razor like what the fuck are they doing what <laughs> why would you not summon ip here uh okay uh yeah so i'm gonna ku clock into ariana they're gonna sprite elf uh i'm gonna go ahead and welcome uh so now that so sprite elf targeted hita the fire charmer did not target formula synchron they targeted Hita the the Fire Charmer. I don't understand why. <laughs> like I said, I'm pretty sure this dude's just straight up brain dead. Um, because it should have been Formula Synchron. But like again, under Ku Clock, I actually can interrupt the Formula Synchron Synchro play, right? Yeah, and actually, like with a big welcome uh, and field spell, I I can get two pops, right? I can get a, I could directly get a pop on their Formula Synchron and a pop on their IP, right? 
So yeah, uh, I'll just kill this sprite elf because I can. Uh, I'm gonna big welcome. They're gonna chain Ash. That's fine. Uh, main two. I'm gonna set welcome here. Yeah. So very bizarre <laughs> turn of events. Like no formula synchro, no IP play. So I don't know what this dude was was smoking. Like pretty sure reviving heat is, is literally the worst revive you can make. Like why would you revive heat? I don't. I don't get it. <laughs> So they're gonna uh, take. They're gonna put Ku Clock in in my spell trap zone instead of Ariana. That's that okay. That's an that that is a choice. And then they're gonna use uh, Promethean Princess to bring back Sprite Elf. Then they're gonna make the Ambo Whale. Then they're gonna make a Nightmare Unicorn. Nightmare Unicorn is gonna uh, attempt to bounce a field spell. Uh, I'm gonna chain Welcome just so I get a pop right. Uh, and then I'm gonna chain Lady. Uh, we're gonna get some, some more Arch Fiends here. Uh, lo lovely is gonna pop the unicorn because uh, I don't want to pop uh, the amphibious swarm ship, right? So there's the two cards, and then they're, they're gonna field spell to put IP. They're gonna do this to do a thing, and then they're gonna use Promethean Princess and target Lovely. Uh, I'm gonna do Lovely to pop a card. Uh, this is gonna draw me a card. I draw a Solemn Strike. I set it. I pop the field spell so they don't get an IP. Uh, and then uh, yeah, they get a princess. That's fine. Okay. Uh, Sinful Spoil Subversion. I'm going to Ice Dragons onto Flamberge. Uh, so they have the ability to make... The reason I do this is because they have the ability to make Brone, Brone here. Um, because they have uh, enough for a Synchro 10. Uh, so I'm not going to allow that. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this, this, this Flamberge, right? So goodbye. Um, and and by getting rid of Flamberge, like their ability to their gas is significantly reduced. Like their ability to keep making plays on subsequent like subsequent plays is just severely hindered, right? Okay. There's the Sunlight Wolf, okay. There's the Access Code Talker, okay. Uh Amblo Whale, yep. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and big welcome and bounce that access code. Goodbye. Yeah, because... Uh, uh, yeah, big welcome was last turn, right? So... Now they're going to get Oak out. Oak is going to get this out. So here's... Now they're going to make Link Rebo. Okay. And now they're just going to battle, because they don't have Flamberge. They don't have... They can't make any sinkers with this Jet Synchron. Uh, yeah, they're I'm pretty sure they're out of gas. They already use unicorn. I think they're just suiciding here because they know they're they're fucked, right? <laughs> this is just so funny. Oh, now rivalry just just completely ends their existence, right? And then they're, they're not gonna bother Link Karibo because yeah, game's over regardless. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, not not a very smart Yu-Gi-Oh player, but also it's like. Again, Snake Eye is not that good. I will say that, uh, what is that, Bonfire makes makes the Snake Eye's deck a lot better, and Bonfire's not out yet, so does Little Knight also makes the deck a lot better. But Little Knight's not out yet. Typhon makes the deck a lot better. Typhon's not out yet. Oh, wait, no. No, no, no sorry, sorry. No, they don't play Typhon. Sorry. Uh, Little Knight, Bonfire, and yeah. Because uh, Bonfire is another uh, full combo starter slash extender where it, you know, they don't have to normal summon. It's insane. Uh, rule number seven. Uh, Labyrinth versus uh, stun. It's more stun. Cool. Uh, Gravekeeper engine to search Necro Valley. Right? A bunch of going second cards. Three judgments. Uh, I don't know why they have 50, 43. You can just make this a 40 card deck. Like Fenrir? Why? What, what's the point of the Fenrir? You're never going to search anything, right? Yeah. Very, very bizarre. Stun build. Wow. Very cringe. So here's the deal, folks. I'm gonna uh, foolish barrel goods on the rollback, and then I'm gonna use Lord and uh, use stuff to pitch big welcome. So rollback and big welcome in the grave is already live. I can big welcome right now if I want to, but I'm not going to. I'm gonna get the field spell. I'm going to set a big welcome and I have a lord. So.
uh, there comes so yeah, Necro Valley obviously shuts down big welcomes and uh, roll back. So there's the Jalgen. Okay. And then uh, with the Clockwork Knight. I'm not sure what the point of this card is. Just to give him more attack. Oh, it creates a thousand attack difference, right? Yeah, my your opponent's... Yeah, anyway, Trap Trick. The Lord set Trap Trick. They go into defense position. They think I have a Mirror Force? Like, what the fuck? End phase, uh, punish, send punishment, set punishment, uh, punishment, goodbye, Jalgen, uh, Entis on Necro Valley, followed by Lord, set a pot, pop that, and I can't big welcome, uh, because I already, uh, because I'm locked out for trap trick. Uh, let's get a draw two here. Our round effect, draw, welcome. Yeah, game is over, completely over, so over. Big welcome, lovely, bounce Lord. Pop that. Lovely effect to pop in hand. Uh, stove effect to return. Uh, Lord effect to special summon. I have game here, so this is just OTK. Yeah, Lord comes out. This comes out. Pops this card unevenly. Nice. And then game is ogre. Damn. Get red stun deck. <laughs> I get people are frustrated with snake eyes, so they're running these stun decks. But again, just play Labyrinth. It's, it beats Snake Eyes, and it you, you also beats these stun decks. So, yeah. Just, just do that instead. Do number eight. Labyrinth versus uh, uh, Snake Eyes with the one copy of Div Incarnate, which is pretty pog, pretty base. Uh, one copy of Betrayal Silvera. Everything else seems fairly same. Two Oaks. That's a little interesting. Not, why, not, why not one Oak? Two original Sinful Spoils. I feel like some of these ratios can get better. All right, let's get into this. I believe I go second. Yeah, I do go second. All right, so opening evenly going second, always happy to see. There's this thing, okay. The Bell Stars, original Sinful. Oh, uh, what the hell is in here? Oh, nothing. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're going to do a standard Snake Eyes board that gonna, is going to involve a princess, an IP, a Flamberge, you know, an, uh, I think an Amblo Whale, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's very standard Snake Eyes stuff. Nothing too bizarre. There's IP. Here comes these two back. There's a princess who buys Flamberge. Put the IP on the thing. There's the Amblo Whale. So here's the thing, folks. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and go straight to battle phase. Let's go. <laughs> Evenly, baby. So here's the deal, folks. Um, they have two Flamberges on the field. And they only have two in the deck. So if they do not ban it, if they banish both their Flamberges, they're completely out of gas. They are so out of gas, they might as well scoop if they banish both Flamberges. Uh, they have to... So basically, I'm forcing them to keep one Flamberge in this case. And uh, yeah, they, they keep the one in attack position. So we got rid of... Uh, oh, you're not going to show me anymore, motherfucker? All right, we got rid of IP. We got rid of the field spell. We got rid of one of the Flamberges. So yeah, they are they can still pop off, quote unquote, but there's their ability to is significant. Like, please run evenly. Just, just do it. it. It's such a good card. Anyway, a Lord set three. Uh, summon Lady, because we, we, we use evenly. So why not? Now we just be patient. There's the Wanted, the Abel Star. Yep. Just be, gotta be patient. Manish, get Oak. Yep. Another Oak. <laughs> Original Sinful. Oh, man. Ban this card ASAP. There's the Borlo Savage Dragon, which I'm just gonna negate the summon. Goodbye. They're, they're special out Ash because they don't have Flamberge. Rip. Flamberge is still going to make more bodies. Like, whatever. They're going to search Div Incarnate. Doesn't, yeah, whatever. Okay. I'm going to put Diabella Star over here. They're going to make Nightmare Phoenix. Uh, which, by the way, my background is protected by Lord. Just FYI. 
Uh, but I still want to chain a big welcome in any case. Uh, and I'll tell you why in a second. But anyway, chain lady. Uh, they're just in the scoop. Uh, basically, uh, yeah, I want to... They already use oh, Ash Effect, I'm pretty sure, this turn. So if I pop Nightmare Phoenix, they can't link climb any further, right? They could potentially go into a Unicorn, which would um, give them a bounce rather than a pop. So I'm just going to say, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just going to get rid of this this uh, this thing. But yeah, technically, I didn't need a chain there because Lord was protecting it. Uh I, I should have actually not chained just to see the reaction, their reaction when uh, they don't get to pop anything, right? Um, anyway, yeah, Snake Eyes garbage deck. Uh, duel number nine, we have Labyrinth versus uh, Snake Eyes with a little cash tier engine. Not sure what that's for. I guess they just want easier ways to make Barone because you can just. Almost summon Ash, I guess. I don't know. Or Bell. Yeah, Bell's a tuner. No Savage Dragon, though. No Jet Synchron. Huh. Maybe they couldn't afford Jet Synchron. All right, whatever. And nothing else particularly interesting about this deck. Oh yeah, so I'd go first. Let's go ahead. Prosperity for six. That's way. Oh yeah, another way to get the furniture. Just just use your pots, right? I'm gonna go ahead and get the Shindraglier because I have a rollback in hand. I want to get rid of so uh, Shindraglier chain lady. Uh, set big welcome. So I have big welcome double solemn strike and then uh, roll rollback in in hand, right? Yeah, so theoretically, uh, I can use Big Welcome to pr pr uh, Chain Lady to set whatever trap I want from the deck. Uh, Big Welcome will actually put Ku Clock in my hand, and then I can Ku Clock and use that trap right away. Uh, and then I can roll back on Big Welcome to bring out Lovely. So I could do all that, right? But uh, uh, patience, right? What's the rush? The rush? What's the rush? They're going to do their, their things. Okay, original. Yep. All very standard stuff. Uh, so, yeah. Now that they're gonna use Divine Temple and set a, put a card in their in their back row, uh, I'm gonna use this now because that way they won't get to special summon whatever card they put in their back row. Um, because uh, this card will not have been on the field yet. Like this is in the same chain. So I'm actually gonna put Lovely here. Yeah, they actually interrupt. They use uh, Call by to interrupt, so I can't search off Lady. So the Ku Clock plan is 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 toast. But I can still Lovely right and get a pop. Set this. And then I'm going to go ahead and pop uh, Ash because Ash wants to send two cards to the graveyard to special, right? And I believe they normal summoned. Did they? Uh, maybe they didn't. No, they die Bell Star into original symbol. So they have not normal summoned. But, uh, yeah, this. Assuming they have no fur, they don't. They don't have uh, another ash in hand. This kills their turn, right? And again, I still, I still have two solemn strikes. So even if they still have a way to extend, I just solemn strike their whatever links they make. Oh, you make IP, so, uh, like a unicorn or access code, solemn strike. And so yeah, so they they ain't winning. They ain't winning this. They just ain't winning this. Uh, duel number ten. We have labyrinth versus what is this? Another Snake Eye with a little, another cash tier engine. They're running Subversion. They're running the planet. That's interesting. Uh, okay. Jet Synchron. All fairly standard stuff, I suppose. Except for the cash tier engine. Yeah, not a great hand for going first. Uh, double punishment, uh, yeah, does nothing for me, right? So the idea here is that uh, uh, on their turn, I can Ku Clock uh, and then summon Lady, and then Lady can chain off of punishment to grab any trap I want in the in the game, and then that trap is live, right? 
So they're going to Fenrir into Unicorn uh, Temple. I'm going to... So because I don't want them to summon a monster, uh, so I get, if Temple's on the field, they can summon the, a monster from the back row uh, when I summon. So I'm going to summon my Lady now. So I feel so one, Ku Clock two, Lady three. Or they're gonna call by on Ku Clock. Uh, fine. Uh, that just means I can't use. I can't like uh, activate whatever trap uh, right right away. That's okay. Uh, lady's gonna come out. So now whatever monster they put back here is not gonna be summoned, right? Okay. So I guess they can't. I guess they uh, they have no other plays. So on end phase, I'm gonna go ahead and punishment on the Fenrir Chain Lady. Grab a big welcome. Uh, and Tis will pop their set, which I'm guessing is imperm, because what the fuck else would a, a combo player have, right? Battle, swing, big welcome, chain lady, set, similar archfiends, because this card is cracked, right? There's lady, or lovely, pop lady, love is going to pop, the field spell is going to summon ash, but guess what, folks? Lovely is, so ash is on summon effect, is in a new chain, but if I pop the ash after it's summoned before the new chain uh he misses timing so yeah so ash is going to summon and then love is going to pop the ash immediately so then he doesn't get his non summon effect and i just swing and now one they have an ash in graveyard right and then lovely resets punishment because uh, uh i don't want them to think i have another punishment also i want this big welcome to the grave lady summons they're, they're just gonna scoop yeah uh without bonfire this deck is a lot less consistent I will say, like they so, once in a blue moon they they they'll have a mediocre board or like if they don't they'll they'll just see like a regular board like a standard Amblo Whale IP board not like a board with like a you know Barone Savage Dragon Appaloosa whatever right um, yeah Bonfire helps with extending like the consistency significantly so yeah this deck's gonna get way stronger with when Bonfire comes on but hopefully they fucking hit original sinful this 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 deck will still be playable with without original sinful but it will just be a a lot more reasonable right anyway let's move on do number 11 we have labyrinth versus uh math mech uh with the cyanide conflicts oh yeah i think i remember this dude yeah Hammer, sign up mining. Well, sign up mining always at two. Oh, I forget. But yeah, can we please uh, get rid of the circular uh, nonsense, please? Uh, thank you. Hmm. But I do go second here. Well, not a bad hand. You get a furniture with a rollback. So suck it. So, yeah, uh, they don't open circular, it doesn't seem. Sakitama, Splash Mage, Microcoder, Link Decoder, Transco Talker, Revive this, uh, Revive Splash Mage, uh, Deco Talker, Heat Soul. They're going to draw End Phase. I'm going to Shandrag Liers, Pitch Rollback, uh, Chain Lady. I'm going to set uh, Summon Lady to set uh, Big Welcome. There's a Ku Clock, okay. So if I want, I can activate whatever trap I set for off Lady this turn. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and kill this Transco Talker. Uh, big Welcome, Chain uh, uh, Lady, set Ice Dragons, because Ice Dragons is amazing against an all Cybers deck, right? Uh, get Lovely out. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pop uh, Chain, chain Drag Lier. I'm gonna pop uh, this card, which is imperm. I'm surprised they didn't imperm my lovely, but I guess it doesn't matter. They'd be trading one for one, right? Either way, I pop one of their cards. So I kill this into a lady. Uh, why do I not set big welcome? Because I want it, I'd rather have it in the graveyard than on the field right now. Yeah, so I have Ku Clock just in case I need to search something off lady. I can use it the same turn, right? Sign it mining. There goes the Mathmax Circular. So they don't have very much, very many plays remaining, right? Um, so what I'm going to do here is they're going to use Sigma. A one, I'm going to use Ice Dragon two targeting Sigma. So if I 
summon Sigma and banish Sigma and Circular. Not only do they not get the search off Circular, but uh, that's it removes a card from their board, which then triggers Lovely to pop a card in hand. And then knowing that they they just have back row and not any cards in hand and no graveyard cards, uh, yeah, they, they, they're out of place, right? Um, presumably. So even if this card in hand was a normal summon that gives them full combo, Lovely's just going to pop it, right? So they're going to chain link uh, three uh, Imperm on the Lovely uh, to negate Ice Dragon. So not bad. So they do have another Imperm. Uh, I'm going to chain link four uh, Lady to, uh, to search a thing off Imperm. And I'm going to Ku Clock 5 uh, because I want to be able to activate whatever I search off uh, Lady this turn. Uh, chain Link. Uh, what I'm going to search? Druma Karma Cannon. It's just amazing against Link decks, right? Uh, chain Link uh, 6, Transaction Rollback. Uh, copy Big Welcome, which will bounce Lovely. Dodge Imperm. This will fizzle. Uh, I'll get my Banish. Uh, Lovely will come out. Uh, Ariana will, will come out, right? Um, Ariana has that effect where if a monster leaves the field, then I get to draw a card and special of, uh, of a fiend monster from hand or, uh, from hand, right? So I can special, uh, lovely for example, back to the field. So yeah, this is all just, I've completely checkmated him. He, he's, he's, so, he's so fucked. And if somehow he still has plays with this one card in hand, I have a torrential and a Draco a Red So yeah, he's not winning the game. It's just not happening. Yeah. He just scoops. Small retrospect, uh, when I use Lovely to pop the Imperm in the right column, I should pop the Imperm in the left column because my Draco Utopian R is a is a, a spell speed 3, so he cannot chain Imperm to that, um, so it would have been a safer play, but whatever. Um, yeah, I, I still like completely have his number. Alright, let's move on. Alright, on to the next one. Duel number 12, we have Labyrinth versus Exosister. Uh, yeah, don't see very much Exosisters. But um, against a snake in a snake eye format, or even against super heavy samurai or branded, it's pretty good to be able to play a deck with D shifter. But the problem is D shifter is at two. It should really be at three. I don't know why Master Duel put it at two. Anyway, yeah, I go second, um, and I open double evenly match. I only have two in my deck, so kind of unfortunately I draw. I drew both of them. That's a very low probability. Anyway, they're doing the standard action sensor stuff. D shifter into um Caspitel. Yep. Alright, so they have Returnia uh and the main uh Magnifica. So if if they play if they're playing their cards right and they're able to execute, um then they can get up to four banishes. However, um if I do not if they are not able to trigger Magnifica, they lose one of their banishes, right? Um, so actually, uh, I'm going to evenly match them. So that means they're going to uh, lose their Returnia. So now they only really have one banish. So I really have to worry about one match. The problem is I have a lot of like... I don't have enough that much back row to begin with. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and activate Lord here. And then my, the field spell. I'm trying to bait the banish on uh, something here, right? Maybe the field spell. I'm going to summon out lady right uh and then i'm gonna bait so that so i so on end phase i bait out the magnifica to banish the uh the lady so uh yeah in this case i'm training late so i wanted them to do this because this, the banish wants to return right so what i want is i want to bait the banish on either lady or the field spell and then after that resolves i'm gonna uh, t uh, stovey torby a uh, pitch evenly match to set a welcome card right so in this case they do banish la uh lady Oh, oh, wait, wait, I can't still be Torby uh, under D-Shifter. Never mind, yeah. Uh, okay, I was thinking of another game that where something like that happened. All right, so they're going to double attack me here. They're going to make Zeus, uh, which is interesting choice. Uh, and on, then they're going to set a card. On end phase, I'm going to uh, send Stovey Torby and put Welcome in the graveyard, right? Uh, they're going to Zeus to send Welcome the Field Spell away. So that was super baited. All I got to do is draw any trap card and I win the game, right? Because if Zeus does nothing without material, uh, Welcome can come back if I can remove any any uh, monster from the field. Uh, but also, the main thing is like Lord can literally summon itself and set a card off of any trap card, right? So all I have to do is draw one trap card, and I win the game, pretty much. All right, I draw Pot of Extravagance. So hopefully, I don't get ashed here. 
Uh, nope. Uh, perfect. This is exactly what I wanted. So Lord, set two. Uh, so now I have a, a Psalm Strike in case they go into uh, a Michaelis. And then I have a Punisher for dealing with a Zeus, right? So yeah, uh, game is over. Uh, so in battle phase, I'm going to go ahead and Punishment, send uh, Chaos Angel, because I don't have Bucephalus uh, anymore, because I, I banished my... Uh, I banished it off my pot, right? Anyway, uh, stove and and welcome and lord are all going to come out. So one stove, two welcome, three lord. Uh, big welcome comes out here. And now if and now they're going to evenly match me, <laughs> which is pretty unfortunate because again this all happened during the battle phase. I had to do this play during the battle phase because otherwise Zeus kills me. So I'm going to go ahead and keep welcome. Um, so even though I generate lots of advantage, I lost a lot of that. But who cares? All I need is welcome, and I win the game, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and welcome into Lovely. Let's let's attack, and then uh, Lovely is gonna set punishment, and the game is over. Like they they can they'll never be able to get two bodies on the field ever again, right? This game is so over. It's so over. Uh, okay, there's this thing. Oh, they're gonna super poly. Okay, that's interesting. So here comes a Garuda in attack position. They're going to go to battle. I'm going to welcome into Ariana in defense position. I don't want them crashing Guru and getting a free draw. So I'm going to go ahead and grab uh, Lady here. End phase. I summon Lady. And then, I, uh, yeah. Punishment. Chain Lady into Guru. Uh, I get, I'm going to send my Guru. I'm going to get a draw. They're going to get a draw, but it's in their end phase. So it doesn't matter. They're going to get a draw. But the more important thing is Lady's going to set a card off of, off of this. And it's probably going to be a uh, big welcome. So I can bring Lovely back. Yeah. So, easy game, easy life. Uh, duel number 13, we have uh, Labyrinth versus Cash Tira. Ass Tira. One cop in Necro Valley is pretty funny. Um, why only one? Why not, why not uh, double down or double up, right? One copy of Edie Crow. Uh, two copies, rather. Yeah, this is a very anti-Snake Eye build, right? The Necro Valley kind of gives away. Two preparations. Cut this down to one and put Necro Valley at two, and I and I swear you're going to do a lot better. In fact, put Necro Valley at three. Cut, cut uh, Ash down to, to two as well. All right. <laughs> anyway. By the way, uh, Maxi is dead under D-Shifter and D-Fissure. So this is like a weird anti-synergy thing going on here. But I do like the evenly matches. I would even cut Imperm down to two and evenly match three, honestly. Like, it's such a good card, but whatever. Uh, wait, is this the dude? Uh, yeah, this is the dude. Okay. I wish Cash Tira was hit in the TCG like a master. One Fenrir, one field spell, one birth, please, and thank you. All right, so pretty good opener. So, uh, yeah, I guess they brick or something. They, yeah, so they go. I go first, I go second, but then they, whatever. Uh, they D shifter. So, Lord set three. So, here comes this thing. They're going to cast Tier Theosis onto this guy, bring out the ogre, and I'm going to torrential here. Uh, well, first cast Tier Theosis is going to return preparations, and then I'm going to uh, torrential. So, goodbye. End phase, uh, trap trick, uh, send big welcome. Uh, Lord, into a second big welcome. Why a second big welcome? So I have a, a, this inkling suspicion that they have an ash in their hand. And the reason because, remember, they won the die roll. They chose to go first and they immediately passed their turn, which means they open on like mostly hand traps and nothing else and no engine, right? So my guess is if I big welcome right here uh, th into lovely, they're going to ash. Right, so I set I preemptively set a second big welcome just in case, and I'm gonna big welcome. Oh look, they have an ash. Right, sometimes you just ha have to have that intuition about you know do they have the likelihood of them having an ash based on their opening hand is just higher probability that from my perspective that they have an ash. Right. All right, so so that's fine. That was all expected. All right, so set battle, big welcome. They have a second ash. They do not have a second ash. So Lord comes out, uh, lovely to pop a card, and they're gonna use uh, preparations, and they're gonna DD Crow because they don't want to. They fear uh, uh, lovely popping DD Crow, so they're gonna banish 
my my last uh, big welcome. That's okay. Because again, I have yeah. So I'm gonna pop this preparations. I'm gonna swing into this ogre, and then main two. I'm use lord, and the game is over. Like if like any 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 cast tier monster they summon, I immediately ice dragons their ogre, banish it, and whatever monster, right? Because they're all psychics, right? Uh, if they if they summon the uh, level, f uh, what is it, the the rise heart? I could just, if I wanted to, just uh, karma cannon, right? Either way, like they're they're done. They have nothing. They they yeah, they have nothing else they could possibly do. Even though all three of my big welcomes were banished, it didn't even matter. I got Logan on the field and I got Lord ready to search like my regular welcome, right? Duel number fourteen, we have Labyrinth versus um, Snack Eyes. And it's spicy text. Triple judgment is hilarious. Why? Why? Going second, this card is so bad. Like, I guess they're afraid of evenly match. I, I think that's the only explanation. Like, they've been evenly matched too many times that they just want judgment. <laughs> uh, if you've been evenly matched too many times, why not run in pure iron wall? Because, uh, uh, well, I guess judgment. Well, thing is, like, because iron wall is good going first uh, or second. Uh, except Iron Wall shuts down. Oh, by the way, they shuts down um, their uh, their Snake Eyes sec uh, spell second effects, right? Anyway, yeah, they're probably yeah they're probably so triggered from evenly matched. Even the match is so good against even Snake Eye, right? You just gotta play it. Yeah, you can't even smear with them because like their monsters all have floating effects, so you just gotta. Evenly matched, right? And speaking of evenly matched, I'm going second. I open evenly matched. I, I'm going to see evenly matched one in four games minimum, right? Like go, going first or second. It's such a good card. Lingaribo. Yeah, they're doing standard snake eye stuff. I mean, I'm sure y'all have seen the combo so often. Oh, they normal summon Ash. I thought they were going to... Uh, they didn't have a level 7 for Barone. Whatever. They needed a body, I guess. So they normal summon Ash. Makes you wonder, do they have another Ash in hand? I guess we'll find out. Anyway, there's the Amber Whale. They have the Promethean Princess in the graveyard. They have the IP here. They have the Lingery Bow. Nice, nice board, bro. It'd be a shame if, some, if something happened to it. So they're going to put IP here. Uh, Battle Phase? Evenly? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they did not open their solemn judgment clearly, but man, look at this absolute decimation of a board, right? They had literally every slot of their board had a card except for these two. Yeah, so they had literally nine cards on their board, and now they have one. <laughs> I love Evenly. And because like their engine is completely dead if they lose Flamberge, they have to keep Flamberge, right? If they banish both Flamberge, they're done. They might as well scoop, right? Because like the Flamberge is like such a key part of their engine that if they don't have it, they just might as well lose, right? Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, let's go into uh yeah, this game is unbelievably ogre. At this point, it doesn't really matter what I get. Uh, let's get a Lord or no? Oh, welcome actually. Yeah, I don't need Lord because they don't have any popping effects, right? All right, they're gonna put Ash onto their back row, and then they're gonna Diabella Star. All right, so I'm on a rivalry. Uh, this locks them into dragons, which means they cannot use uh, summon a spellcaster. Diabella Star is a spellcaster, right? Uh, and then they're locked into. Oh, I remember why I didn't get Lord because I I knew I had rivalry, so getting Lord is slightly pointless. Yeah, so now they just have a 3K body, so I'll take the damage, sure. So let's go into welcome Ariana effect. Get Lady, because I know they don't have Imperm, right? Or any negating. Big Welcome, Chain Lady, set. Yeah, it was... I was going to say, like, I think I was going to set Druma Cannon, but, like, it, it doesn't matter, because uh, La Lady is going to... Love is going to come in, uh, pop... Uh, uh, probably pop their Dragon, honestly. Um, I don't know. It, it doesn't matter. I have... O it, I essentially have OTK, right? Because I'm going to go into their, their, their turn, they're going to have no monsters on the field, and I'm going to have... Because I have uh, access to another... Welcome, uh, right? Uh, I can just like OTK them, right? Actually, yeah, I was gonna, I, I would, I would lovely, uh, lady uh, set a welcome because then I, ha yeah, bouncy Ariana, uh, normal Ariana, uh, get a search off, and then I have, yeah, enough uh, damage for game. So, 
Yeah, man. Even yeah. So for those of you <laughs> who are who are uh, salty about sphere mode last last uh, last time I did this uh, uh, master duel rank climb. Please, evenly matched. There is your solution. And in fact, thanks to transaction rollback, evenly matched is even fucking better, right? Uh, there's gonna be a game later in this video where I double evenly match my opponent <laughs> and and banish their entire board. It's gonna be great. You're gonna love it. Um, rule number fifteen. We have uh, labyrinth versus uh, labyrinth. A labyrinth mirror. So I've been seeing some of these weird ass labyrinth builds. So a few things to keep in mind. One. Uh, I've seen this Nabdir servant build with the one copy of uh, Ecclesia, you know that can obviously search punishment, and they have kept Kalos in the in the, as a as an Adir servant target, which allows them to like mill the top five cards of their deck to the graveyard, which might help them see a transaction rollback. Keyword on might, right? I mean, probably like you know, banish five cards, you're probably going to see at least one, right? Hey, maybe you also mill Keldo and Mudora, right? Uh, the problem with this build is like. You're lacking trap, good trap cards, right? Uh, I mean, I guess. I mean, if if there was more ways to mill, maybe this would be worth playing. But it's like, I don't know, building an entire deck off of milling transaction rollback, and then also having because again, transaction rollback with no good targets in the graveyard doesn't matter. Like, let's say you mill transaction rollback, but then all you mill are welcome is welcome, right? It's like uh, you don't have you don't, you don't mill ice dragons, which is one of you don't mill punishment, you don't mill uh, Garu Daruma. It's like you're not even going to be able to roll back into them. So what's the point, right? So I don't know what this Soul Resonator bullshit is about, about. I guess it's so they can go to Baron. Cut this nonsense. Furniture's down to one. Get rid of this this side frame package. It's, it's dog shit. Like, cut... Like, I, I don't. I wouldn't mind this build if you would just cut down the, the, some of this excess and just put more traps, right? Because, again, if you don't actually have traps that you can roll back into... Like, bro, where's your evenly matched, Right? You gotta have at least one evenly matched, right? If you're gonna do this build where where you're gonna try to mill for transaction rollback, at least get an evenly matched. Don't even have that. So I don't know how this dude made it to diamond or whatever whatever rank he is now. Like maybe master. Like it's it's pretty sad. And then all these dumbass resonators that don't do anything. Um, yeah, very sad. I don't know. It just it just seems pathetic to me. Like, dude, just just. Like if it may, if these are evenlies, maybe, but like, come on, bro, you need more more traps. Like, all right, I'll tell you what. If you're watching my video, let's say you're a Labyrinth Enjoyer, here's what you should actually do: cut the side frame package. Don't need it. Uh, cut maxis. Don't need it. Um, because because I mean, most of the time, like they have call by or or a cross out or ash, like what whatever, right? Uh, cut uh stove to one. Cut uh Shadragler to one. Uh, I'll keeping Ariana is fine. Uh. Keeping the Mudora Keldo is okay since they interact with Snake Eyes. Uh, cut this uh, Resonator dog ship. Uh, cut Ermperm's Nadir Servant to two. Uh, cut this nonsense here. Um, and then what? Wh whatever whatever's left, like add in power traps. Add in fucking. Uh, wait, do they even have? A, okay, they do have one copy of Welcome. Um, yeah, add in add in fucking evenly matches. Add in more copies of Karma Cannon. Karma Cannon is insanely cracked right now, right? Like it, it's. Karma Cannon, like, I started this video playing a two of Karma Cannon. I, I, I immediately regret it and went to three of. It's such a good card. It's so good. It just completely wrecks Snake Eye. It, like, really good, pretty good against Manidium. Really good against, uh, pretty good against Super Heavy Samurai. Very good against, um, the other Link deck, uh, Math Mech, right? So it's just, yeah, you really need to have, like, max out Karma Cannon because it's, like, insanely good. Um, I would even. A second copy of Punishment, just because in case you mill one of them, you can still search something off Ecclesia, right? Um, uh, yeah, uh, bro, where's your Bucephalus? You have two Garuas, but no Bucephalus? Like, what if you got to take out a, a large attack monster? Like, the highest attack you can get is 3,500, but then you don't get any advantage off of it, right? So you have to send a Chaos Angel. Bucephalus in the, in the, cut this Baron, you don't need it. Uh, probably Underworld Goddess, you're never going to realistically use it. Cut Malong to one. It, hard, it doesn't come up that often. And then Bucephalus, uh, you even have, uh, yeah, but just yeah, more traps. The, 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 the key word here is more traps, right? Like what's the point of milling a transaction rollback if you don't actually put any powerful traps in the graveyard, right? Anyway, so I don't, I don't like this build, uh, in general, like the, the theme of this build of just milling your deck, like, you know, we're, we're not a mill deck, right? We are a controlled uh, back row control deck so 
Yeah, like all this just seems so pointless. Um, anyway, but I guess they they get to diamond, so something's working, right? Well, unless they reset the diamond and, I, and then they're just trying to do new build. All right, so I go first here. Uh, let's do pot into these things, Lord. Our on effects uh, get Torby. The reason to get Torby is because we have a rollback, so we want to get rid of that, right? All right. Um, yeah, so Torby obviously said rollback. We're going to say big welcome because we have so many uh, right, copies here. Uh, Karma Ken is amazing. Always good. Um, Trap Trick, always good. And we have a Lord, right? Lord to protect our back row. So they're going to uh, Shindraglier a transaction rollback and set a big welcome, okay? Uh, Nadir Servants and Kikalos grab the Ecclesia, and then they're going to mill. All right, now, now now look at the, this. is exactly what I'm saying. Look at this mill, right? N none of these cards are trap cards. So you have a transaction rollback in the graveyard with zero traps to choose from. Like, how fucking sad is this, right? Now, now having a Mudora and, is, in the graveyard is okay, but like... All these other four, and I guess maybe Ku Klok, because Ku Klok can sort of recycle itself, only off a, a furniture, though. But, like, imagine if, again, remember I told you, uh, yeah, they, they milled extra Nadir Servant. Cut down a copy of Nadir Servant, cut down Psy Frame, right, uh, you, and then replace Add Traps. These would have been two of the traps that I mentioned, instead of these these shit, shit cards, right? So yeah, I, I don't understand the point of the, of the, Psy, the Psy Frame Warrior pack. The, yeah, the Psy Gamma package. Anyway. So, normal uh, Ecclesia. Guess what? They can't search Punishment because they already have it in their hand. That's why you need at least two Punishments in your deck, right? And in fact, you would even argue maybe you should go three Punishments, right? Because you're probably going to mill one. Uh, you can, uh, you'll can guarantee that one's in your deck. And then you can roll back into one, right? Like, I would say two because I don't like going to a third because it's once per turn, right? Yeah, so then they're going to go ahead and big welcome here. Uh, chain Lady. Okay, I'm going to allow this. There's the Lovely. Lovely's going to attempt to pop a card. So they cannot pop my back row, so they'll either pop Ariana or something in my hand. Uh, Lore is revealed, so 50-50, they pop Lady, Lovely or Lord. If they pop Lovely, great. Uh, doesn't matter. If they pop Lord, a little sad, but it's not, you know, it's recoverable. Anyway, so Shinraglier comes back. They're going to pop the Lord, unfortunately, so that's unlucky for us. But our back row is protected, and, uh, you know, Lord did his job, right? So they're gonna get a, get a Ku Klok. Uh, they're gonna attempt to recycle transaction rollback, which is not bad in the, in the mirror matchup to have it on the field because um, you can copy your opponent's traps, right? And in this case, I have better traps than he does, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and Karma Cannon. He's gonna chain Lady and sets Ice Dragons. Okay, so good to know Ice Dragons is over here. So I'm gonna pop it. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and big welcome. They're gonna Ku Klok, which not sure why they literally can't use any traps uh so lovely comes out ariana comes back um uh torby comes back uh mudora is going to uh attempt to shuffle big welcome arma cannon and torby okay sure uh goodbye ice dragons now i'm gonna trap trick into evenly matched and now guess what folks i'm, I'm going into their the next turn with an evenly matched a lovely Versus, uh, what is this, six cards? Yeah, I wonder what's going to happen. <laughs> I can literally just battle phase. All right. So, big welcome. Ariana bounce lady, okay. Ariana effect. Okay, they're going to summon lady. Okay, this comes back. Sure, why not? Stove. Battle phase. I'm not going to attack monsters. I'm just going to end, end battle phase. There's no point in attacking monsters, right? End of battle phase. Now they have six. They still have six cards. They have to banish down the two. They keep so they banish their lady by a oh, lovely, by the way. So they choose to keep lady and banish lovely. That's very interesting. Um, main two Ariana effect. Yeah, the field spell. Uh, I'm gonna roll back. Uh, what did I roll back? Oh, target trap trick. Right. Uh, trap trick is going to banish a big welcome to set a big welcome. This big welcome to use this turn. So, uh, Lady comes out here, I bounce around, and I pop this back row. 
Bam. Goodbye to their rollback. And now, lovely Chain Link 1, uh, they're going to roll back Chain Link 2 to copy Ice Dragons. And they're going to target Lord of the Heavenly Prison. So here's the thing. I don't have any fiends in my graveyard, right? So the best they can do is, is, is summon Lords of their field and banish their lady, right? So they already banished Lovely off of uh, the, the evenly matched. Now they, ha they, they're, they are choosing that they might have to banish their own lady, right? But I'm asking, all right, are they just are they actually going to banish their lady? Or are they just, they just want to steal Lord to have more bodies on the field? Let's find out. And then they're going to stove Torby into some garbage. Uh, big welcome. Okay. So they're going to banish their lady and my lady. I, I still have a lady, by the way. Uh, and I'm still going to get a pop. So I'm going to pop their big welcome. Uh, G fucking G, folks? Like, <laughs> all right, they're going to get this back. Sure. Uh, I'm going to reset Trap Trick because Trap Trick is goaded. So if they go, if they try to go to battle phase, I have big welcome. Take out Lord, right? This game is over. It's so over. It's completely over. Plus, I still have a big well. If I wanted to have a big welcome bounce, I could bounce m that lord into my hand, by the way, and trigger lovely effect to pop a card. <laughs> like it's it's crazy. So they're gonna go ahead and uh, use this field spell. Okay, sure. And then they're gonna scoop. Like, dude, bro, what are you actually thinking of accomplishing here? Right. Well, like, let's play this out. They have they have a field spell. They have a lord, and they have a card in hand. Random card in hand. Right. Let's say I use a uh, big welcome in my graveyard to bounce lords in my hand. Lovely will get to trigger. I pop a card in their hand. Why a card in their hand? Because the field spell is worthless by itself. It does nothing, right? And because a card leaves the field, I get to trigger welcome in my graveyard to set back to my field, right? And and I have a trap trick for whatever I want. I, right? Well, whatever my heart desires, I have a trap trick, right? Um, which I, I don't even need to use here. And then on the subsequent turn, I have Ariana to search. I have Welcome to pop, to pop their field spell, get a lady on the field, and I have, yeah, I swing for game. And I have Lord as follow-up, right? <laughs> like, do you see how much better my Labyrinth deck is than theirs? Like, what, like, what, what was the, 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 the most interesting thing they did was they used Mudora to bounce my, my, uh, Torby into the deck. Ooh, so, great. So instead of Recycling Torby from the graveyard, I just get him back in my deck. Like, okay, like it, it's just pointless, right? Like, I, I get in the Snake Eye matchup, maybe that might look appealing, but like, like if you're going second, they already have fucking like the Promethean Princess in the graveyard. How is the Mudora gonna help you going second against Snake Eyes, right? Like, wouldn't you just rather have a, an evenly match at that point, right? You see what I'm saying? Anyway, yeah. So bad build, just just. I don't know. Well, this is not the first time I've seen builds like this with the Nadir Servant into Kekalo Simil 5. Uh, it's it's cute, but it's also silly. Also, Kekalo should be banned. So, uh, anyway, uh, duel number 16, we have Labyrinth versus um, Manadium. Uh, wait, is this is this the... I wonder if this is the Manadium player where I uh, double evenly. Let's find out. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna double evenly a, a Manadian player using rollback. It's gonna be hilarious. Spoilers. No, that's not the dude. Yep. So I go second. Karma Cannon is so nice. Oh no, this is the I remember this game. Yeah, this is a closed game because they set up like a a bunch of negates. But as you can tell by my uh, opening hand, Karma Cannon Torrential Tribute so fucking good against like going second, right? So they can't negate everything. Anyway, I'm not, I'm not even going to pretend like I know or care about... By the way, they searched uh, reframing, folks, so that's another negate I'm going to have to deal with, right? So, uh, spell trap card monster effect while they have a synchro monster. Arrival, yep. Chaos Angel. So this is a Chaos Angel made with a light and a dark, so cannot be destroyed by battle and unaffected by monster effects. But if it goes, if it flips face down via uh, Karma Cannon, it doesn't matter. Sprite Elf. 
So they have one um, one Omnigate here, one Omnigate here, which is their uh, reframing, right? Uh, this painter is a monster negate if and only if I have a ba um, a banished card, which I'm gonna have because I'm gonna I have pot of extravagance, right? But a pot of extravagance is way too good to not use, right? So, I, all right, so I can't set all my cards, but I can set Ravelry, which clears can clear their board. I just have to play through two Omni. I have to bait both these Omni gates, and with a uh, Karma Cannon, Torrential Punishment, I can, right? So I'm going to immediately Karma Cannon to bait out the first negate. They're going to Baron negate that. Uh, I'm going to Punishment uh, on Fenrir. I forgot that I cannot target Baron because Sprite Elf. Uh, your opponent cannot target this. Yeah, so I wanted to target Baron to force out the other negate, um, but I forgot about the Sprite Elf. I'm, I'm not used to playing against Sprite Elf anymore because it's banned in TCG and like, um, yeah, it doesn't really come up often uh, Sprite decks on Master Duel. So I fucked up. I, I fuck up here. I do send Entis. Entis will attempt to pop their uh, the reframing. Uh, that's going to bait out the Dissipator. Okay. Uh, that puts a card back into my extra deck. Uh, I'm going to Karma Cannon again, which gets rid of the Sprite Elf. And then uh, they're going to flip summon the Chaos Angel. I'm going to Torrential Tribute for to bait out the second negate, uh, the, the last Omni negate, which is reframing. And then I'm going to Rivalry. And now they're locked into f only Fiend Monsters. So, fun fact, if they flip summon Barone to Fleur, I lose the game because Barone can pop Rivalry and uh, regains their Omni Negate, right? Although, the Omni Negate is, is still... Uh, hold on. I don't know if it's still once... It's once while face up on the field, right? So, if she flips... Uh, oh, you can only use the previous effect once per turn. Yeah, so they don't get the Omnigate, but they do get to pop Rivalry, which is the biggest issue here, right? So what I would do instead, if they uh, flip summon Barone, I activate Rivalry, uh, force... Oh, no, no, if I Rivalry... Yeah, activate Rivalry to bait the Negate, and then if they if they try to, uh, I think I, I might have been screwed if they flip summon Barone. Honestly, anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and set four here, uh, set three more here. So they're gonna tribute summon uh, a monster phase down, which what monster could this be? I guess it has to be a level seven, right? Because it's two monsters. Uh, could be Nibiru. This honestly could be Nibiru. So I know if they flip summon Barone here, they can pop rivalry. So I'm gonna immediately welcome into Ariana, Ariana into Lady. Lady, uh, trap trick, uh, set punishment, uh, sent big welcome, big welcome, lovely, bounce, Ariana, lovely's gonna, has to pop Barone here, I have no choice, I can't let them out, rivalry, they're gonna, uh, Black Witch, oh, they could've, uh, tribute summon Black Witch, they're gonna use sinful spoils to set lovely here, which doesn't matter, cause this game is already over, like, yeah, and then they're just gonna scoop, it's like, bro, how are you gonna play through this, you're not, right, it's like, cool, yeah, all I had to do was just prevent them from popping rivalry, and then, yeah, they, they can't play anymore. GG, easy game, easy life. Rule number 17, Labyrinth versus uh, Labyrinth. Okay, so this this board, this board uh, build looks a lot better than the previous one. Uh, they're definitely copying some elements of my build, uh, namely the one of each Floodgate, uh, the Triple Lord, good to see the Double Sphere Mode, uh, but one virus, okay. Uh, double uh, punishment, single copy of ice dragons, all good. So most of these ratios are good. However, and, and then they have one of each pot. So it looks a lot very similar to my build. However, Maxi and Ash, bro, come on, man. Like, what is Ash actually doing for you here? That like, like for example, a trap trick won't do better, or a torrential tribute won't do better. Think about it. Is Ash really gonna? Let's say you're against a Snake Eye. At what point do you ash where it ends their turn and they don't put up a board? Answer me that. I'm genuinely curious. At what point is the ash actually going to stop them from building a board? And it's not. Same with like Super super Heavy Samurai. It's just... But whatever. Um, you play App Cologne, which is funny because they don't have the... Uh, if you're going to play App Cologne, you should at least play the uh, Schism uh, window package, which would be hilarious. Um, Appaloosa is kind of funny. Uh, triple Imperm is so cringe. It's so cringe. Whatever. At least this build is better than the last one that I saw.
But really, you don't need three Ariana. You're like two is the max in my opinion because you seeing double Ariana in your open hand is like one of the most one of the worst feelings in the world, right? Also, bro, where's your rollbacks? You're playing in a post rollback world with no rollbacks. Fringe. Anyway, uh, so I go second. They're gonna extrav here. They're gonna lord. Okay, I like set three. I do like where I'm seeing so far. So stove send the big welcome, and I'm gonna set regular welcome. Big welcome in the graveyard is fine. Lord, activate my lord. All around effect. They're gonna solemn strike it. Okay. Um, probably would have been better to solemn strike a lovely or a lady, but that's fine. It's not not not, not a big deal. Uh, and I'm going to welcome. They're going to max C. Sure. And they're going to summon Lord. And they're going to set Virus. Okay. See, the problem is with this Virus is you're not going to use it because I have a big welcome in the graveyard. And I'm going to bounce that Virus. So here comes Lady. Uh, they're going to punish me on Lady. Ooh. All right. So here's the deal, folks. This was, this was, this is what we're, we call jabated, right? So I knew if I welcome into Lady... And I have no back row. Lady can be targeted and destroy my card effects. However, <laughs> for those of you who are unfamiliar with the mirror match or are not used to the mirror match, like maybe this guy, he's going to attempt to kill my lady with punishment. I'm going to chain lady and set a card from the deck. So all, And I'm going to set rollback because uh, rollback is on the field is cracked against the mirror matchup because it literally means I can copy whatever traps they have on the, on the, on the graveyard. And I see a punishment. Mm, I'll take one of those. Thank you very much. I, I do like me a punishment, right? So then they're going to send an extra deck card, uh, in this case, Boar Sword Dragon, and not get to pop because Lady is now protected from being destroyed by card effects. So I completely baited that. <laughs> and uh, they're going to welcome here, okay? They're going to welcome into their Lady. And here's the thing, folks. Now I'm going to big on end phase, I'm going to big welcome bounce their virus. So now they're going to go into a turn with no virus, no back row protecting their, uh, the, their Lady, right? And what what are they gonna do? Like, I have total advantage here. I have complete advantage, right? Uh, yeah, because I have a search off Lord. I have a search off Lady. The best card that they're gonna set. They have what two, three cards in hand. One, it's, I think they have two cards in hand. It's just gonna be Virus. But again, Virus does nothing. Um, if I can just pop it before it resolves, right? I have Trap Trick to go into a big welcome if necessary, and I can just use Big Welcome to pop. You uh, summon lovely and pop the virus anyway. So yeah, total control of the board state right there. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's it, it, yeah, interesting duel, very interesting duel. Duel number eighteen. We have labyrinth versus adventure. Prank kids. Oh shit, prank kids is back. Yeah, so uh, they bump uh, meow meow moo got uh, unlimited. So it used to be at one. Now it's at three. And this dude's running two. Um, yeah, they're just playing good old adventure prank kids. Oh, I guess uh, I think this uh, enchantress went back up to one as well, or two as well. I think it was at one. Um, I really just want the adventure package dead. It's just such a toxic package to, to exist in the game. But whatever. I'm going to win this. I'm going to be this dude anyway. Uh, The opening Lord and bunch of and Solemn Strikes going second is always good. All right, Prank Kids Palace. There's the Fanzies. Water Enchantress. Man, I can't believe people still... Oh, man, people would be playing this. Imagine playing prank Adventure Prank Kids in current year. Imagine. Never thought I'd see the day. It's it's such a... It's like... What, it's a, it's a White Raigeki and a Negate. Like, that's all, that's all it is, right? That's their entire board. It's just a Raigeki and a Negate. Anyway, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna pretend I remember how prank kids even works. I just know they just link summon over and over. There's pandemonium, views. There's a rocket ride. Ooh. All right, so here's something spicy. So I'll talk about their board once they finish here. But yeah, this is very spicy. All right, so uh, 
Uh, yeah, they're going to go ahead and uh, get enough material back to make a uh, use pandemonium. So here's the deal, folks. They end on Roaring Roaster, which is a tr quick effect that says, tribute this card to destroy all spell traps your opponent control. So this is a very good card against back row decks. I don't know if he assumed I was a back row deck because I'm using uh, Labyrinth, Card Sleeve, and, and Icon, right? Or maybe uh, he's just, he just always makes this card because against Snake Eyes, like they're going to have a lot of, you know, once they use their field spell, right? Um, they put a, they put a card in the back row, and then you know maybe the Die Bell Star, uh, whatever puts a card in the back row, and then they can like clear the back row. Maybe that's the reason that they're doing this, or maybe because they knew I'm Labyrinth. I don't know. Uh, the point is that uh, basically I have to. Lucky for me, I have a Lord of the Heavenly Prison in hand, and oftentimes I use Lord to try to bait my opponent's negates. This time I can't use Lord to bait my, their negates. I have to make sure Lord resolves. Otherwise, like I just lose the game, right? Imagine I use Lord right here. They they uh, Griffin negate. And then I set four or five, and then they distribute this and clear my back row, and I lose the game, right? So I have to bait their Omnigate, their uh, Griffin Rider. So they're going to shotgun Maxi, like whatever, it doesn't matter. All right, so I see an Evely match. That's a great way to bait an Omnigate, that's for sure. Because they basically they have, to, they have to respond to it. They have no choice. So battle phase, Evely match, they're going to chain Griffin Rider, uh, as expected. Now I can use Lord... I'm going to set four. They're going to go ahead and fuse into the washing machine, What, whatever. Don't care. But the thing is, my back row is not protected, right? All right. So they're going to bounce uh, Solemn Strike. That's okay. Uh, if they try to bounce any of these two, uh, Ice Dragons are a big welcome. I chain it immediately, right? I was hoping they would do that, but alas, they got a Psalm Strike. That's fine. Psalm Strike can stop their Griffin Rider, so that's what's, that's what's important. The battle phase, uh, Ice Dragons, I'm going to get the Weather Washer. Uh, banish the Link 4 because it's an Aqua. They're both Aquas, right? So now I can summon Lord, and now I have a 3k body that they can't stop. And I have Karma Cannon, uh, which is amazing against the, their entire deck, right? Because, um, anyway... They're going to make Unicorn. Unicorn is going to discard, and they're going to attempt to bounce Big Welcome. I'll chain Big Welcome. They're going to Griffin Rider. Uh, I'll Psalm Strike that goodbye Griffin Rider. Don't want them to have Negate. Bounce Lord. Lovely effect to pop uh, Unicorn. They're going to Meow Meow Moo. Access Code Talker. They're going to pop uh, Lovely, and then pop Karma Cannon. So it looks pretty dire for me, doesn't it? Yes, it does. <laughs> However, let's see what I top deck. <laughs> Extra, baby, let's go. <laughs> so I'm gonna draw two. Unfortunately, the true the two are draw I draw are not great. Um, I don't really want the field spell here. I kind of just want any trap, right? Any trap like punishment, uh, tr like trap trick, right? I kind I'd rather have normal traps, but alas, I get the labyrinth field spell. I, I have to make do with it. I'm going to go ahead and set, uh, activate and set two. All right, so they're going to use, um, they're going to draw an Enchantress. They're going to bounce my Psalm Strike again, and then they're going to uh, summon Enchantress. And now that they did, I'm going to use Karma Cannon, which is going to send these cards to the graveyard. And now the game is over. <laughs> if they just went to battle phase and attacked, that's it. <laughs> I would be screwed, right? But no, they, the combo players, they, they can't help themselves. They have to summon. They can't help themselves, right? So then what happens after this? Uh, chain Link 1, uh, uh, Field Spell to bring back Lovely. Uh, chain Link 2, Lord to summon itself and search, set a card. And then I have a Welcome in my Graveyard that can be used to bounce a card. And then Lovely pops a card. So the game is over. It's so over. It's so over. Like, all right. So, yeah, there was a little bit of luck involved. But that's true on both of our side, our ends, right? Like, he got a little lucky, I got a little lucky. Um, I would say, like, I got kind of unlucky, but, like, like if he had bounced, or attempted to bounce Ice Dragons, right, or attempted to bounce, then I would have had the extra Psalm Strike. I Psalm Strike the Summon of Access Code. He doesn't have Access Code, right? So, a little bit of luck on both ends, but, man, the, the fact that he technically had game, all he had to do was attack, because I cannot activate Karma Cannon if there are no monsters that can be flip face down. 
By the way, for those of you who didn't know the ruling, you cannot activate Karma Cannon if there are no monsters that can be flipped face down. The token can't be flipped face down. Access token cannot be flipped face down. Um, so, yeah. You just had to do that, right? But he just couldn't help him. He couldn't help him. He had to summon the Enchantress, even though they had game. But right, it's like it's 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 like an itch. It's like combo players have like ADHD or autism. They have to do. They're compelled to do a thing that's that's that ultimately ends up being their demise. It's 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 hilarious, but also satisfying. Rule number nineteen: We have labyrinth versus uh, uh, Manidium. Oh yeah, this is the this is the dude I, I double evenly match. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh y'all gonna love this. <laughs> Uh, so I, I pretty good opening hand going second. Uh, I can foolish barrel. So assuming I don't, uh, you know, I can always foolish barrel into uh, transaction rollback, right? And then I have four pretty good back rows: a psalm strike to stop any negates, a torrential to clear the board, uh, like. Really good, like, even if I don't, like, so the spoiler is I'm going to top deck evenly match here. By the way, I just want to read something uh, about the card they just searched. When a spell, trap, or, or monster effect is activated, right? So now it says card, not effect. So they can re use reframing on evenly match, but they cannot use it on transaction rollback in the graveyard. Anyway, they got the dissipator. All very standard Manadium shit. Yep. Yeah, this is this is where they done fucked up. <laughs> All right, so this fa face down is reframing. So I top deck evenly matched, which is great. Now here's the thing, folks. So I know they have two Omni Negates. Barone and their face down reframing. Reframing can negate evenly match, but it cannot negate transaction rollback. A lot of people don't know that. Barone can negate both, but reframing can only negate evenly and not rollback, right? So I'm going to Foolish Barrel Goods to put rollback in the graveyard. If they negate right here, I go to Battle Fates, I evenly, and then they, use, they have to use their second negate, and then their negates are finished, and then I can set uh, all my back row, and then they have nothing they can do on their turn except die, right? So they don't get negate this. So I, I send rollback. Cool. Battle phase evenly. They're gonna they're gonna chain Barone to negate it. Ooh, well, is that so? <laughs> Still end the battle phase. Rollback banish. Pay half life points. Target evenly. And now they can't negate it with reframing because it's a spell. It's a trap effect. It is not a trap card. So. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, look what just happened. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, this is why you have to play rollback and you have to play foolish barrel goods and you have to play evenly. Because sometimes you just, depending on your opening, you just get a double evenly, like, just like that. Where the second evenly is stronger than the first evenly. Fucking mind blowing, right? It's, it's, it's incredible. Like, even if I did, it, even if I like didn't have evenly, like, like, let, let's say I did not top that evenly for, uh, as my sixth card, I still send rollback. And then all four of my, my trap cards remaining in my hand can now be used twice, right? So it's like, why would you not run Foolish Barrel Goods? Like, seriously, explain to me the downsides of Foolish Barrel Goods. There are no downsides. There are literally no downsides of Foolish Barrel Goods. And if your opponent is dumb enough, they might just Ash Foolish Barrel Goods, which is the, 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 one of the biggest wastes of Ash Blossom in the, in the universe, right? Like, there's no downsides. Just play Foolish Barrel Goods. I promise you, you will not regret it. Anyway... So I'm going to go ahead and set four here. Yeah, this game is so over. It's so over. But they're going to Rota into uh, Room Heart. Yep. They, ha they have a uh, Calarium, right? So they normal summon this, and I'm going to go ahead and Torrential. So uh, if if I allow them a single ten and Changing, I could Psalm Strike that, but I, I want to use Psalm... I, I kind of want to save Psalm Strike for when I uh, welcome, in case they have Ash, right? Because I want to have, like, um, like an actual monster that you know an engine going so i don't want to have to use psalm strike for that I, I i'm just gonna say you know what you are using your normal summon. i'm just gonna kill this because i don't think they have uh uh they have other plays right so so they're gonna tap to the revive i'm gonna get a big welcome they're gonna uh maxi okay 
Okay. Then they're going to uh, summon Astraloud, battle phase, uh, summon Lady. Uh, they're going to attempt a battle. I'm going to uh, Druma Cannon and a Chain Lady. And then I can set a big welcome from deck, right? Um, and then on my turn, I swing into Visas, uh, big welcome, Chain Lady into Daruma or Ice Dragons, whatever, right? Uh, Lovely comes out, pops Astraloud, swings for 29, right? Uh, and then Lady can reset the room or like, yeah, the point is, like, they're done, right? They already use their normal sum. They have no other extenders. They they just lose. So they, they're going to go ahead and scoop. Yeah. Yeah. The devil evenly. Oh, man. It's so, so satisfying. Like, that's like, if they were smart, they'd use reframing and then bro, and then they get both. Great. But then they go into the next turn with no, no follow ups, no negates. I set the same cards I set. They do the exact same plays, right? They summon visas. They they normal summon uh, Reichhardt, and then I torrential their board, and they all die anyway, right? So they're, they're, either way, they all die. Like I, I clear their board. So, but it is funny that uh, <laughs> they they didn't know that reframing cannot cannot negate <laughs> rollback. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's yeah, hilarious. All right, uh, so that was the. Duel number 19, yeah, yeah. Uh, duel number 20, we have Labyrinth versus, what is this? Uh, Endymion, I guess. Yeah, uh, let's go in into that. Yeah, Endymion also has the, uh, sets up a spell trap negate so they can stop evenly, but um, it's once per turn, and they need a certain number of counters, and if you have a second evenly or, or access to rollback, then, you know, you could double evenly them. If I go second here, So, Servant, Upstart. Blah, blah. Electromite, yep. Can't believe Electromite is still legal in Master Duel. Insane to me. Ooh. I'm not going to pretend to know what the hell is going on here, because all I know is they want to end on uh, Endymion, uh, the Jackal, a bunch of counters. So they'll have a Monster Negate, a Spell Trap Negate, uh, and I guess I guess in this case they're also going to Prometheus. So Prometheus pop into an Amblo Whale, right? So I noticed they only have two little two little counters. This they need three counters for this dude, and uh, this does not have a quick effect. And then they need six counters for this dude. Ah, that's a shame. So yeah, uh, you, battle phase evenly. Goodbye. They're gonna keep Amblo Whale because I, I guess they assume they have more better follow up with Amblo Whale, and it's a three K body. Unfortunately, I'm going to normal summon Ariana, which does not trigger Princess. So that's pointless. So the reason I get Torby here is because I want to... Uh, I just want uh, more cards in play, like in, in rotation, right? So put take this brick out of my hand. Set the field spell. Activate field spell. Okay. We 100,000% take Karma Cannon because it's cracked. Karma Cannon literally just outs Amlo Whale, like... By itself, right? They have one card in hand with the Amber Whale, by the way. The so top deck, the top deck chicken game. They're going to go ahead and draw a card. Okay, battle phase on declaration. Uh, Karma Cannon. So this is going to flip Ariana, send this to the graveyard. And then they, yeah, they just lose the fucking game. <laughs> but once Amber Whale is off the field, I can then welcome without. Uh, so Promethean Princess can only revive itself if they have a fire monster on their field, right? So I can so if they if whatever whatever card they have is a, is a is a monster right, I can welcome into a, a lovely lovely pops or not lovely, sorry, uh, I guess a lady right, uh, lady pops whatever monster and then all they have is a chicken game on my turn I can out out chicken game or or use it to draw a card like whatever I want. Point is I have total control of the board state of the game state and yeah so they just scoop. Easy game, easy life. Uh, duel number twenty one we have labyrinth versus. Uh, Cash Tira. Wow, double anti spell. Wow, that's bro. Going. Well, uh, I don't understand. Like, anti spell is so bad when you're going second. It's so bad. It's so fucking bad. Please don't do this. Uh, okay. One nib. Why? Why only one? Why not three? Like, take out these anti spells and put in three nibs, right? I, well, maybe it's a cross out target, but like, hmm. That's still like pretty pretty sad. Whatever. Let's just get this over with. Uh, 
But I do go first here. All right, activate Lord. So, so why do I activate Lord before I normal summon Ariana? Because uh, by activating Lord uh, first, a it might bait out a side frame gamma, which will negate Lord, destroy it, put two bodies on the field, right? And then Ariana is free to use effects without uh, afraid of side frame or imperm. <coughs> also, uh, a lot of times because uh, Yu-Gi-Oh players don't know how to read, they'll shotgun Maxi. The first sign that you activate Lord, they use Maxi. I'm like, cool. Normal summon Ariana, and then I know not to go into Lady, right? Because I don't want to give him a free draw off Lady. So, anyway, Ariana, they're going to imperm. That's fine. Yeah, set three, pass. So, they're going to shotgun Maxi, okay? O Ogre into Big Bang. Uh, this, uh, cash, Scare Clock, Cash Tira, banish that. I'm going to Torrential here, and then I'm going to summon Lord. Lord is going to set big welcome. They're going to get a unicorn into cast here Theosis. Cast here Theosis target unicorn. I'm going to chain ice dragons onto ogre. Uh, manage both of these. So uh, Theosis will fizzle. And then, yeah, the game is completely ogre. It's completely ogre. Yeah, they're just going to scoop. The game is cast ogre, folks. It's... <laughs> Gee, what a what a sad, sad game to end on. But yeah, uh, I so I make it to Master Master Five or Master Five, yeah, um, yeah. So before I do my climb to Master One, I'm gonna go ahead and do the 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 DC Cup since that's live for a limited time. Whereas uh, the, the the rank climb, the rank season is 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 available till the end of March, right? Um, so yeah. So next, my next video will be Adventures of uh, Labyrinth in the DC Cup, and then followed by uh, climb to master one and if, and then if you're good and you're nice to me and you don't post in my comment section begging for a deck list if you're very nice and don't do stuff like that then maybe i'll post a deck list maybe who knows maybe i won't because i never do in the past right so yeah play evenly play rollbacks play foolish barrel goods like i see labyrinth builds without foolish barrel goods i'm just like why it's it's so fucking free and the saddest part is like the foolish barrel goods is only out of one of in the in the master duel Whereas it's a two of, or it's a three, it's, you know, it's unlimited in the in the TCG. I play two in, in TCG is great, right? Uh, I would play three, but it's unfortunately it's hard once per turn, right? Uh, man, if only Foolish Barrel Goods was not once per turn, I would play three in the TCG, hundred percent. But because think about it, like let's say you were able to Foolish Barrel more than once, Foolish Barrel rollback, Foolish Barrel. <laughs> Evenly, foolish barrel, you know, welcome, like, and then just go to battle phase, or like, <laughs> goodbye, <laughs> right? Um, anyway, uh, yeah. So, hope you enjoyed watching this video. And uh, for some, oh, oh, uh, oh, earlier in the in the, in the before I, I, I sign off earlier in the in this video, I mentioned that I was playing Simul Archfiend, right? Uh, I ended up cutting that card just because I wanted just I just wanted my third. Through a Karma Cannon. Like, I, I, it, Karma Cannon is so good. It blows my mind that there's Labyrinth players who aren't playing it as a three of. It's so good. It's great in the mirror matchup. Shits on Math Mech, shits on Prank Kids, shits on uh, Snake Eyes. Really good against Super Heavy Samurai. Um, even good against Branded, right? Like, just being able to. Yeah, I, anyway. So, hope you enjoyed this video. See you in the next one. Peace.